Hi guys, I am Sumit and welcome to Sumit Stuff. So today we will be creating a game known as Super Hexagon. So now, um, without further ado, I will just open Unity Hub and inside of that I will just click new with the latest version of Unity which is 2020.1.12 F1. So I will just let it to load here and then we should select the 2d template because our game is going to be 2d and rename it as super hexagon load so i will just let it to uh, create the project so just click create and it will open the project for you i will just cut the video till then and after it opens, I'll just resume. So my unity is now opened. I'll just go into scenes and just rename our sample scene. So just click rename and then I'll uh, just call it main level. So now uh, we'll head over to the game view to see how the game will look till now so as you can see it's uh, blue so I want to change the color to um, something like uh, deep orange so till now we'll just save the Scene here, uh, like I'll go to Unity. Okay, here uh, I'll just save it in my scene folder. Oh, I think it is uh, already saved here, so I'll just uh, click cancel here. Uh, what you should do is you should go to 2d objects and then just click sprite so for this sprite we need to assign uh, some sort of mesh or sprite so we'll just to choose the default knob which is like circle first of all we need to reset the transform what this will do is it will um, just set all of them to 0 0 0 except the scale x y z so we have our knob here and as you can see we got our tiny little uh, knob here also so uh, for, for that we will just increase the scale to 2 oh, all of uh, them to 2 not uh, Z because uh, Z is only for 3D mm, games like uh, it, uh, it is actually the Z axis which is this one I think yeah the blue one which will extend the width to the um, back side so um, if we do that also we can't actually like see it because we are in the 2d view yeah so now uh, we'll just change the color to something like gray and then uh, just uh, lower the alpha i think it would be nice if it is a little bigger like this yeah so so it's perfect now and now here uh, let me rename it to something like uh, yeah we can name it center okay so after that again we, we need to create a new sprite 
and then again uh, reset the transform and then uh, we will again assign the mm, default knob sprite uh, for this one okay uh, so now here uh, we need a few things to add here which is rigid body 2d and then the body type will be kinematic so uh, we don't want it to fall by itself uh, uh, we only uh, want to control the uh, gravity through the scripts so yeah uh, now actually in super hexagon uh, one minute the knob or the player will be above the center so i think something like point four would work i think it's a uh, it's little bit too close so what about per point five i think it's uh, nice uh, so now other uh, thing to add here it will be our circle collider circle collider 2d and i'll just rename it as the player so now go back to the assets folder and just to keep it organized i'll make a new folder known as clips so now uh, we will name it something like uh, player I think it will be fine for now I'll just open it in visual studio as you can see my visual studio 2019 is open so now uh, we need some kind of speed here so I'll just make some space and then uh, just uh, make a public float here known as speed and I'll put it to something like 600 F and then here in the update method we need uh, uh, we need a movement uh, so we need to do input dot get access row uh, which uh, gets the access of horizontal horizontal axis so actually uh, what we need to do is just uh, store uh, this in some type of variable so we don't want the movement to be in the update function by itself so we'll make another float known as move okay so now uh, we will get rid of start method because we don't need it and the uh, co comment also so now here what we need to do is uh, we need pri wide fixed update which will be a private void so now uh, we need uh, uh, transform dot rotate around uh, means it will uh, rotate around the player will uh, rotate around continuously so here uh, we should do vector 3 dot 0 and then vector 3 dot forward and then move multiplied by the time dot delta time and dot actually I it's not uh, delta time it's uh, fixed uh, 
fixed uh, delta time okay and then here we should multiply it by negative speed so I just close it by ending up with a colon and go inside unity so I'll let it load it it's loading now so what we wanna uh, do is just attach the player script uh, to this uh, player so if we test it out as you can see it uh, does not do anything yet so uh, I'll just uh, come out of the play mode yeah so I almost forgot that uh, to show you we can control it with our arrow keys so actually I, I forgot that so now as you can see we can uh, control it with our uh, arrow keys like this and you can adjust your speed and play around with this or even inside the script here and also you can play around with get access and get access raw okay so now so now uh, we could move our player with arrow keys and a and b keys also so uh, we completed our first step so now what we wanna do is uh, we we should make the hexagons uh, spawn randomly at uh, any uh, position with the same center and uh, for that we need hexagon so what we wanna do is go to fx and then just uh, select the line yeah so now here as you can see it uh, will add a line rendered component so we need uh, to reset the transform and then uh, just go into positions and uh, you can see that there are two positions here one minute I just adjust the screen here. So, so now we should adjust it to zero and then uh, just make the size to six because hexagon has six sides. So here we should put uh, some values in here and it will update here so for the first one I'll give it for minus 0.5 and then in the second column 0.8 so it's uh, nice um, in the second one I will give it something like negative 95 I mean negative 0.95 and then other uh, other 1 to minus 0.5 and then in the second column minus 0.8 and then in the uh, third row we uh, we put Mm, point 0.5 here so and here I'll give it point 0.8 and in the fourth one point oh, 0.95 and then here uh, point 0.5 yeah uh, 
we will give it point five and then here point eight. Uh, something is wrong here. Mm. Oh, so I for almost forgot to keep it to negative eight. So as you can see here, we got a perfect hexagon here. So cool. Now, so now what we wanna have is uh, we need to check that uh, we need to have something that checks that if the player is actually colliding with the hexagon for that we need colliders for the hexagon first of all i'll rename it to hexagon um, here and then now what we want is we need to create another empty game object and call it collider so it will contain the collider for our hexagon and what we need here is edge collider 2d and then uh, one minute i'll just lock the inspector here and then I'll add tab to another inspector to somewhere like this one and then uh, if we select the hexagon here which is the parent of the collider as you can see it will not change here but only change here so if you uh, go to points and then just uh, change it to 6 then we can just copy the positions here so I'll just copy those real quick here Actually, not 89, 8, and then 0.95, 0.5, and 0.8 at last. So, as you can see, I'll just unlock the inspector here and close this tab. If you select here this collider, as you can see, the green line is the edge collider of the hexagon so as you can see it is in a correct path here in which uh, in which shape is the hexagon so now what we wanna do is uh, just select the hexagon and we need to add components so first of all I will just select a rigid body 2d component and again the body type will be kinematic so now we should uh, create another script hexagon okay I didn't spell it right sorry for that hexagon and then just we'll create it and add it so here it is actually loading it so I don't think I'll just select the hexagon and then move it to scripts folder and then I'll just open it uh, I don't know why it's popping like that so uh, it is now loaded here 
so now uh, what what we wanna do is uh, we need a reference to the rigid body which is here in the inspector if we select here as you can see the rigid body 2d we need to reference it from this script so just say public and then rigid body 2d and then we'll take uh, we'll take rb2d which means that uh, if we call out this rb2d then it will just reference it to uh, rigid body 2d and then in the super hexagon uh, uh, the hexagons will shrink so we, we need to have something like uh, shrink speed speed so here uh, we should assign it some value let's see if it goes with 3 uh, 3 I'll just uh, get rid of these comments okay so now what we need to do is uh, here in the start method we should just type uh, actually it's rb2d right rb2d dot rotation is equal to random dot range from 0 f to 3 6 I mean Three sixty degrees. So it will select a random range from zero to three sixty degrees. It will rotate. So now we need transform dot local scale, and it will be equal to vector three dot one multiplied by ten f. And here in the void update, we need the same thing we need a local scale but this time we need a uh, minus equals to vector 3 dot 1 here and then multiplied by string speed okay and then again multiplied by uh, time dot delta time here so we just end it with a colon colon and then we need an if statement so transform dot local scale dot x we have this x axis so what we wanna do is uh, uh, greater than sign and then 0 0.05 f oh, and f then uh, we need to uh, describe the object so this right here and then pass in the game object and then a colon what this line actually means th that if uh, if the hexagon here uh, goes uh, let me zoom here instead if it uh, comes here like 0 0.05 like it shrinks then yeah, the hexagon should destroy itself when it comes here so uh, this script actually means that I mean this method so now uh, if, if we uh, go in go into unity actually it's kind of lo loading here yeah. so now if we hit play then uh, one minute mm, I can't I, dr I don't think oh so actually I didn't uh, reference this rigid body, rigid body here 
so now if we come here and go into the play mode so now as you can see uh, it is shrinking here like this and it disappear so uh, cool now uh, the only thing missing is that only uh, one hexagon is coming and in super hexagon uh, they spawn uh, infinitely right so now we will uh, do that so now uh, first of all uh, in the line renderer so i'll just expand it and then type something oh so it's a lot bigger point two yeah it's a uh, low it looks fine so this thickness is fine now uh, now actually to do that uh, I'll just go to my access folder and create another folder known as prefab here and then drag and drop the hexagon into the prefab folder to create a prefab out of it so now I can delete it from the scene because I don't want any hexagons in my scene and if you want any so you can just drag and drop it here or here then it will adjust all of everything for you so now what we want to create is some sort of a spawner so we need an empty game object and then uh, we'll name it as the spawner and what we uh, need is a spawner script I'll just create and add so it will just uh, refresh and then I'll just open it real quick here like this uh, sp sp spawner script is open so what I need to do is I'll just um, drag it in the scripts folder to keep it all organized and so I'll just click it again to open it uh, because the location is changed and Visual Studio can't locate it so I'll again open it here again we'll get rid of these comments here so now before we get into this what we want to do is select our spawner and reset its transform and then uh, just go into the uh, visual studio and then I will make myself a space and then we should make a, a float spawn rate and then 1f and uh, I'll just oh, not like this here public float on rate and then uh, default it to 1f I don't know why, why Visual Studio uh, keeps uh, doing like that so another uh, thing we need is public game object uh, which is our hexagon prefab and then uh, here in uh, I think we need another which is float next time to spawn we will default it to 0f and then here in the word update we will type if time dot time will be greater I mean yeah greater than equal to next time to spawn then what we need to do is here 
we should uh, we should instantiate a prefab which is our hexagon prefab and vector 3.0 and quaternion dot identity so uh, I'll just um, get rid of the start method here because we don't need it anymore and then here in the next time uh, next line we will uh, set the next time to spawn to time dot time here plus 1 f and then uh, uh, what we want to do here is uh, divided by spawn rate I think spawn rate and then uh, a semicolon to close it so now actually save this thing here and then head back into unity uh, so it will just will refresh it and as you can see we have a hexagon prefab and a spawn ray so what we want to do it is select the hexagon and then drag it here so if we play then we should have a hexagon spawning so uh, as you can see we have hexagon spawning yeah, randomly with a random rotation now if we uh, if we uh, like uh, collide with the hexagon then nothing happens like this as you can see nothing is happening so uh, we will uh, see it now so i'm just having fun playing with this so now so now uh, what we want to do uh, to achieve that is just go into our player script and then make another uh, function or word known as uh, on tr trigger enter 2d which is uh, inbuilt function of unity and then what we need to do is before uh, filling it there we need uh, some package known as uh, unity engine dot scene management and now oh, what we want to do is scene manager dot load scene and then we need the scene manager itself and then get active scene and then close it with the colon uh, I don't think that the correct thing so now ah, I, f I forgot something and then here dot build index and then just end it with a colon so if I uh, save it and go go over to unity uh, just le let it refresh it now go to uh, go to build settings and then uh, the um, build should be included here uh, no, no scenes uh, and then inside that main level so now if we try to play here so if we uh, collide here nothing happens so it's still the same thing so now uh, to achieve that we need to go into our script again 
uh, wait a minute i think something's wrong here actually uh, it should actually come here yeah i'll just pause the recording so now i forgot to see i didn't see that what we are working is in the untitled scene so i'll just save it first in the scene folder and uh, overwrite it with the main level okay yes i want to replace it and then build settings and then add open scenes as you can see there is a world scene here now if we try to run the game here uh, and if we uh, i don't uh, i'm not getting the one minute i'll be back so i'll just pause the so i um got the mistake actually in the player you should take this is triggered uh, thing so uh, if i play now you should uh, be actually you should uh, it should restart the game so cool uh, so if i collide with the hexagon so it restarts the scene it's pretty nice oh, oh. it's so hard so now uh, so now the last thing that uh, super hexagon uh, does is that uh, re really cool effect when playing it just uh, rotates the camera so now what you should do is i will create a new script here and then open it uh, visual studio is already there so it's again opening so i let it open and then be back in a minute so now i just close the visual studio from opening so what we want to do is um, get rid of this two using statements and the entire start method and the comments like this and then here what we want to do is uh, transform dot rotate and then uh, in the first argument we give uh, vector 3 dot forward and then time dot oh and then time dot uh, delta time and then multiplied by 40 uh, or let let me keep it at 35 so now uh, i'll just save it here uh, if i head back into unity actually i don't think 35 is enough uh, so let's uh, make it 50 or uh, something it uh, for it to give some cool effect uh, first of all uh, 
we should attach it to our main camera like this and then just if we hit play then we should be able to as you can see it is uh, rotating our camera here I uh, so, so instead of the circle sprite you can add any sprite you want like uh, to make it look like the uh, real game you can add a triangle sprite uh, from which you can do in photoshop or use the unity's uh, uh, default one uh, let me also show that I don't think Unity has uh, uh, the this one. Yeah, it's not there. You can make your own sprite and attach it. So now, uh, so now we have completed all our core mechanics of the game. So if you have enjoyed this video and um, if you are not subscribe to my channel yet so please subscribe to my channel and uh, uh, like the video for more content so thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video